Hi, we're Ariel and Michelle, and, and we're, we're the, the Board, board game, game Tutors. Today, we're going to be going over Just the Basics, Part 2, for the board game Agricola, All Creatures, Big and Small. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. So here we have the board set up again. In this video, we're going to go over how you set up the board to begin playing the game. And we're also going to talk about the actions that you can choose from on your turn. Those are all on the main board. Mm -hmm. So in front of each of us, we have our player board. And you can see you have a little cottage already. Mm -hmm. And we have three workers. That's what those blue things represent. So we have three of those. And then we have nine borders that we'll be able to access during the game. And there will be ways of uh, using those to build out to your farm. And obviously one player will have the start player marker. Mm -hmm. And so that person will be the first person to place a worker on the main board. Mm -hmm. And Ariel has in front of him his three workers, which are those red tokens. So you can tell which belongs to which player. Right. So here on the board... There are several spots that items get placed on that you can take from. So up there in the top left corner, there's um, an action space. These are all called action spaces, those yellow spots. Mm -hmm. So the one at the top has a, the, a picture of the first player token mm -hmm. and also of one wood. So when you start, when you set up the game, you're going to place one wood token there. That will be waiting for someone to come and take it. And you would take it from the supply and put it here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then... Yeah. So uh, basically, the first player marker, um, let's say it was with me, Ariel. Um, so if Michelle wanted to, she could put a worker there and take the first player marker from me. So when the next round of play starts, then she would be first player and get first choice. Right. So you don't put the first player marker up there because the original starting player has the token. It just gets passed from one player to the other if... Uh, if necessary. So it never actually gets set up there on the board. Hmm. So if no one ever actually goes to this space throughout the whole game, then the same start player will be the same start player the entire game. Right, for every round. Mm -hmm. So then the next action space to the right, you, you would set three pieces of wood that someone could come and take. Mm -hmm. You can easily tell because it says three and then a wood symbol in that action space. Mm -hmm. And then moving to the right, we have stone. So the first one, you place one stone token. Right here. And then going further to the right, it says two stones. You place two stone tokens. Okay. And then you also would place a border there where it says one border. Mm -hmm. So all these action spaces that need to get filled up, they have an arrow pointing out that shows where you place the item. Hmm. A little red arrow right there. Mm -hmm. So if we can see that, it's kind of small. Yeah. So um, this also shows you how many rounds you're in. So... When you put this on the board for the first time, you'll know this is round one. And like we said, there are eight of these. So once the eighth one is placed on the board, then that's the last round. You finish that round, and then that's the end of the game after that point. Mm -hmm. So those would also come from the supply. Mm -hmm. You can see over to the right, we have the supply. So you start with eight, and as they, as that supply diminishes, you know that you're getting farther and farther along through the rounds of the game. All right. Okay. So then here in this sort of square area or with for small squares. This is another place that you'll be able to go to get stuff. So that white token is called read. Mm -hmm. You put a white token in that spot when uh, at the beginning of the game and whenever that spot is empty. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about replenishing in a second. Yes. Then to the right, you put a pig in that spot. Yeah. One pig. Below that, one horse. Mm -hmm. And then to the left, one cow. Mm -hmm. So you can see there that there are parentheses with other animals inside of them. Mm -hmm. As we go through the rounds of the game, at the beginning of each round, you're going to replenish the items on the board. So first you'd go to the top where the wood is, and you'd place the same amount of wood. So even if that w one wood token is still left there because no one took it during the previous round, it stays there and you place a new one from the supply. Yeah. So basically things can start to build up because you can add to what was already there. Mm -hmm. And then same with the three wood. You always add three wood at the beginning of the next round, regardless of whether what was there was taken. Mm -hmm. Same with the stone. You add one stone to that action space. And then going further over, you always add two stone. Mm -hmm. And then you add uh, another fence if no one took, uh, not fence, another border uh, there. So you would take one from the supply and put one right here. Yeah, and you'd add it regardless of whether someone took the one that was there or not. Right. So if someone took this, you would still add one, um, even if... But then if this was still here, you would still add one. 
So mm -hmm. regardless. So then when you go down to these animal spots, you're going to add something different if the item wasn't taken. So if that white reed is still there, you're not going to add another reed. You're going to add a sheep. And you see that sheep symbol in parentheses. Mm -hmm. so that's how you know. So you take that sheep mm -hmm. and put it in that spot next to the reed. Oops. So the next, during this coming round, if someone goes to that spot, they get a reed and a sheep. Mm -hmm. And it could continue to build up if no one took it. So you'd add another sheep the next round. Mm -hmm. Where the pig is, you don't add another pig, but you add another sheep if that pig is still around. So yeah, we would just, um, I'm just moving it over here for illustrative purposes, but you would put it in both if that's where you needed to do. Mm -hmm. And then where the horse is, you wouldn't add another horse. If the horse was still there, you would add another sheep. Mm -hmm. And where the cow is, you would add another pig if the cow is still in that spot. Now what would be different is if, if either of the players did go there in the previous round, say they went there and took that cow, then you wouldn't be adding a pig, you'd just be adding an, a new cow. And that's the animal that's not in parentheses. So in the symbols, whichever symbol is in parentheses, that's what you add if the original animal hmm. was is still there. So if the cow's still there, you add a pig. But if it's gone, you put a new cow. So yeah. So the first animal, if this is empty, that's what you put there. If there is an animal here, then you would add the secondary animal. And let's say, uh, uh, for example, let's just say people really didn't like cows during a particular match of this game, then you would just keep adding more pigs, not cows, but more pigs. So you could keep adding every single subsequent round, another pig, another pig, another pig, here, another sheep, another sheep, another sheep. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how refilling uh, those different spaces works. We're gonna go over that again in another video, but um, those are the basics for filling up the spaces for the basic game. For the basic game, it would just be a cow, just a horse. Uh, a reed and a pig. Yeah, for the starting round. Mm -hmm. So um, those animals in parentheses, those are for subsequent rounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've gone over basically what you put onto the board to refill different spaces, let's go over everything else. So here, um, uh, basically, obviously, this game is all about collecting different resources to build different buildings, to build fences and whatnot, and also to collect animals. So obviously you're going to have to construct structures that will hold those animals and fences and whatnot. So this first space right here says unlimited. You can exchange one wood token. So these brown tokens up here, one wood token for one border or one fence. So if I take my red worker and put it here, then However many wood I have in my supply, so if I've collected several wood pieces over there, I can exchange one wood piece for any of the border pieces in my supply. So let's say, for example, um, for illustrative purposes, let's just say I had one. So I could take this one wood, give it back to the supply, and this is my supply of different borders that I can use. Now I can begin constructing a fence to keep my animals penned in. So that would just be that. And you can do that for however many wood you have, because like it said on the space, it's unlimited. It's only limited by how many wood you have. So here I only have one. If I had five, I could do five. Um, or also, as you can see, I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So even if I had nine wood, I couldn't do nine fences because I don't have enough. So basically you're limited by how many wood you have and by how many borders you have. And so obviously you'd use this to construct an area to put your animals inside of. And this right here, this cottage that you have originally, this counts as a wall here. So you don't have to construct another wall there. So that's that space of constructing fences. So let's go back to the board over there. So, um, like we briefly explained before, these spaces, if I put my worker here, I'd take the resource. If I put my worker here, I'd take that resource, etc. But um, now, if I put my worker here, this says I can get two borders for free. So I don't have to pay any building resources to get those two free borders. And also unlimited, I can spend two stone to make one extra border. So 
like I said before, it's limited by what you have in your supply. So if you look at my area here, I could only make a maximum of nine uh, borders. In this particular area, it's called a wall, but they serve the same exact fun function as a fence. So uh, if I chose this action up here, I'd get two borders for free, so I wouldn't have to pay anything for them in terms of resources. So I could build two walls for free. And if I had two stone, two stone, not just one, then I couldn't build another wall. So uh, the important thing you need to know about this is the fact that it's in units of two. So I'd have to spend four stone if I wanted to build two more borders onto my current farm. Um, and obviously, this is obviously a lot more expensive than using wood, because with wood, you only have to pay one wood to build one fence. But here you get two free borders. So it's obviously a cost benefit analysis you have to do there. Like, okay, do I have more stone or do I have more wood right now? I'm going to build fences in that particular way. So that's what that space does for you. It gives you two free from your supply borders, and then however many you want to pay for uh, using stone. Okay. So that was that. Let's say um, I wanted some more resources. If I go to this space right here, this is not a refill space like all of those spaces up there, but this space gives you one wood from the supply, one stone from the supply, and one reed from that supply. So you're asking yourself, maybe why would I want to go here when I can get three wood over there? Well, one reason you might want to do that is if, let's say Michelle stole that space from me and she got the three wood. Well, now at least I get one wood, one stone, one reed. So that's still pretty useful, but I didn't get three wood like I originally wanted. So um, a lot of the quote unquote action in this game is basically um, if the other player is stealing action spaces from you. So once there's once their token is covering a space, you can no longer do that action anymore. During that round. During that particular round. So that's what part of the tension of the game is. Like, okay, so they got the two stone because they went there and took those resources. So now I can't get two stone, but I could still get one stone or I could get one stone over here. Uh, it's all tactical in that respect. All right. Over here, we mentioned this briefly in the previous video. Um, you get to take this border. So in the game, you originally start with nine in your personal area. Now I could take this and have 10. And I can also expand. So I can go over here to these expansion tiles and make my farm bigger. So the basic rules about this are you can't just put it any which way. You can only put it to the right. So that way the path matches up here. Or you can go to the left and put it this way. So it's up to you. Um, obviously, the where the place uh, the place that you place these expansion tiles uh, for your farm are important in terms of the fact that it determines uh, how your borders are going to work, uh, what you can build, um, and all these pre-existing borders right here on your starting tile, uh, starting player board area. Uh, these contribute to other things. So these, this can be a wall on this side now, and, and it can be a wall on this side. So it's tactical in that respect. So if you put your worker here, you can get one of those expansion tiles and this. So if you need some more space for your animals, that's probably why you would go for the expansion tile. And more borders may have built up depending on how many rounds have passed and whether people have gone to that spot in previous rounds. So sometimes when you go there, there might be two or three borders waiting instead of just one. And in that case, you get to take everything that was there. Okay. So let's say I move, um, I chose this space instead right here. This says once per action, you can spend three stone and one reed to build one stone. So I would have to put my worker there, and this is a limited action. It's not unlimited like these two higher boxes. So I can only buy one stall. And you can see down here on the stall, it says the same exact thing. You spend three stone and one reed. You give those to the supply, respective supply areas. And now I have a stall, which has one victory point. And then, so whenever you build a building, which is what you're doing right now, if you chose that spot, 
So we would take this stall uh, tile and you would place it somewhere on your board. So like we said, whenever you construct anything, it has four walls all around it. So these can help you pen your animals in and protect them because if your animals don't have a place to stay, they'll just run away from you. So uh, that's not great because each animal costs gives you one point at the end of the game. So this stall can be placed anywhere where you don't have a building. So yeah, that's that. And that is that action. And you can only do that once. Even if you had six stone and two reed, you could still only buy one stall. For one single action. And so directly beneath that, this is another building that you can do. So as you can see, it's unlimited and you have to spend either five wood or five stone, not a combination of the two, just either. So five wood or five stone. And if you already have a stall currently on your board, like so, then you can use this action space up here and flip this stall over after you spend five wood. And you can see that uh, that stall is now stables. And um, the main reason that you would want to do that is because um, it's bigger, it gives you more victory points, and also you can keep more animals in stables versus a stall. A stable right here in the top bottom right corner here, you can store five animals. In a stall, you can only store three. So whenever you store animals, you place them directly on top of that building. All right, so those are stalls versus stables. And so... And uh, also, you cannot take a stable and just place it on the board. You have to have a stall beforehand. Yeah, that's important. Okay. So now down here, um, I'll add down here, over here. So this is all about feeding troughs. So here, this says plus one feeding trough. So you can take one feeding trough right here from the supply, and you can add this to any space on your board. That does not currently have a feeding trough. So I could put this here. Now we're not going to go over exactly what feeding troughs do, but suffice it to say, feeding troughs will help you store more animals in a given space. Mm -hmm. So we'll go over that more later because it can get kind of confusing. But feeding troughs help you store more animals in a given space. So here, I get one feeding trough for free. So that's always nice to get a free resource. Uh, and it's built already, so that's kind of nice. Um, or, also unlimited, I can spend three wood to give me one more feeding trough. So if I wanted two more feeding troughs for a total of three total feeding troughs, I would have to, I would get one of those feeding troughs for free, and then I would spend six wood to build up the other two. Or let's say I only wanted two, I would have to get the one for free and spend three wood for the second feeding trough. And like I said, these are basically to help you keep more animals in a given space. Alrighty, so now here, here's one special thing about this game. Special buildings. These do not refer to stalls, as you can see right here. Stalls are exclusively that uh, yellow space on the main board. But special buildings, there are two of these. So one player could go here, and one player could go here. Or one player could go here and here. Well, it just depends. But if you have the resources to buy one of these four special buildings right here, then you can go to that space and spend those resources, put them back in their, into their respective piles, and then you get this building and you place it on your board. And they're called special buildings partly because there's just one copy of each. Right. There's only one open stables, which function the same as a stable you have to have a stall first and then you can build an open stable on top of it i'll go into that more later uh, a shelter there's only one of those a half timbered house which actually as you look down here uh, a half timbered house replaces your lowly cottage so um, a half timbered house is worth five victory points and you can keep two animals there a cottage is worth zero victory points and you can only keep one animal there and lastly, the storage building, which we'll go over more later on. But um, you can buy that and put that in your area as well. So those were all the buildings. And then, like Michelle said, here's where you can get all the animals for the most part. 
and some read as well. And as we explained, uh, sheep come in after uh, this first read. So if there was one read there, then you, uh, the second animal, uh, it's not really the first animal, but uh, if you put, um, if this read is still there, you put one sheep or a second sheep uh, in the following round after that, a third sheep after that, etc. cetera. Uh, pigs and then following that are sheep again. Horses first and then sheep following after that. And cows first with pigs following after that. So an example of getting an animal would be um, if Ariel wanted to um, maybe get a cow, then he would just put his uh, worker in that spot and take the cow. So it's just, it goes only to that specific square, basically. Mm -hmm. And so I would pick up that cow. I would go to my player board. As you can see here, I have nothing to keep my cow in. It's not normally smart to pick up an animal, but in your cottage, you can keep one animal in your little cottage area. So I'm going to get that cow and put that in my cottage. Mm -hmm. It's not living in my cottage per se, but there's a little fenced in area on my cottage. So that's where it is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's an example of taking an animal and putting it on your board. Also, one more clarifying point. Um, whenever you take any building materials, let's say, for example, I went here, it could apply to any of those. But if I went here, I would take this reed and I would put it next to my other building supplies. Well, not building supplies, but next to my other stuff. Like, you don't really have space to put your stuff on your farmer board. So you'll just put it next to your farmer board. Mm -hmm. Next to your workers, next to your possible borders, etc. So that is everything um, in terms of all the different options that you can use to do all the different action spaces on the main board of Agricola, all creatures big and small. And since you have three workers on every turn, you're going to get to place three workers, which means you're going to get to do three of these actions. And you and your opponent will be taking turns placing the workers. So that gives you an idea of how you'll be choosing. Once they take something, then you can't do it. So you'll have to prioritize and see what's best for you to do every every turn. Right. So yeah, like I would put mine down. Michelle would put hers down. I would put mine down. Michelle would put hers down, etc. All right. All right. So... If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, clarifications, uh, please contact us, email us, or get in touch with us. Leave us a comment. Um, we appreciate all of your feedback. Um, if you enjoyed the content of this video and would like to see more regular updates from us, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Board Game Tutors, and check us out on uh, boardgamegeek.com, and give us likes there, too, if you enjoyed this content as well. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.